Peter Cetera is certainly done with Chicago after declining an invitation to the Songwriters Hall of Fame next week. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. This story is almost anticlimactic when you look at it. After what happened at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame where Cetera did not show up. Now next week, James Panko and Robert Lamb will be in New York for the for the Songwriters Hall of Fame and Peter Cetera will not be. Cetera's response? Music is supposed to be fun, and nothing about that evening was pointing towards it being a joyous occasion. I mean, there's a reason why we're not together, and I'm sure we're both happy about that. Basically, they didn't want to work with me, nor did the show want to work with me, to see if something could happen. And I begrudgingly tried to make it happen, even though I didn't really want to do it. There's been too much water under the bridge, and so be it. I just couldn't get up there and fake it and pretend I was having a good time. A lot of fans are going to be disappointed, and I understand that. But I always say the same thing when it comes to old bands who have been together for a long time, trying to get back together and make it work. Would you want to go on a road trip with your ex-wife? I remember Rick Emmett of Triumph a few years ago. We were talking about his possibility of ever getting back together with Triumph. And Rick basically said that. It, it's kind of like going on a road trip with your ex-wife. At least with your ex-wife, there was sex involved at one point. It's kind of like your neighbors saying, you know, we really thought you were such a cute couple. We want you to stay together. It'd be so cute if you stayed together. But they're your neighbors. They have no idea what's going on inside that band. We as fans do not know all the secrets and all the things that went on between Peter Cetera and the rest of the boys. I mean, there's no way of knowing. The people on the inside, like I say, they know what went on. But there's a lot of years these guys have been together. And music is very competitive. There's a lot of egos there trying to get their voice heard. And Chicago's a really big band. There are a lot of folks. It's like a big, ba it's like that child trying to be heard in a huge family. I'm using a lot of metaphors tonight, aren't I? I reached out to Danny Serafin after that so-called uh, Chicago documentary a few months ago. He was pissed. He decided in the long run not to do an interview because I didn't think I think his manager didn't want to stir the pot anymore. Enough had been said, people knew how he felt, and Danny, I completely understand that. I talked to Bill Champlin about eight months ago, and, and you know, he seemed kind of pissed too about not being in the band, and, and, you know, and Bill doesn't suffer fools, as most people know, and he just kind of says it like it is. And I've got an interview in this studio of Peter Cetera just after he left Chicago. I didn't do the interview, but I now own the interview. And he was being very diplomatic and kind of relieved that he was on his own at the same time quite nervous. We will release that as we did with Randy Meisner, our last interview, in the next few weeks. I was taken aback after watching that Chicago documentary and how the remaining members of the band were uh, making the members who had not been in the band for a while kind of wrong. Champlin, Cetera, Donnie Dacus. I'm like a lot of you. I would love for Chicago to have a reunion. They'd all sing around a campfire and sing Kumbaya. 50 years though. This band have been together for 50 years. Most marriages don't even last anywhere near that. All I'm trying to say is they're allowed to have a lot of bad blood. I mean, they're, they're really... How many people have you known for 50 years? That's a long time. There's going to be crap that happens. They're going to, you know, they're going to piss each other off now and then. And I understand Peter Cetera not wanting to get with this band again. You know, I understand why Bill Champlin's probably a little pissed off or Danny Serafin's a little pissed off. This whole thing made me think of Chicago 7. I was 14 years old in 1974. And I, I picked it up and I remember being pissed off that the whole album didn't sound like wishing you were here. You know, I really wanted everything to sound like that. But, you know, the album was impressive to me. It was a double album, and I and I didn't have a lot of those at the time. So I, I gave the album a chance, because I was a typical guy who went right to the single, you know, on, on the LP. And I gave a Prelude to Air by Danny Serafin a, a chance. And then I, I and it, of course, that led to Air, which was written by Walter Perizader, Danny Serafin, and the great James Panko. And I remember thinking, I'm, I'm literally, my palette in music is getting deeper. And then I went into and bought all the other albums. And, you know, it blows your mind listening to the Chicago stuff. So I had a lot of love for these guys who have basically matured me as a, a radio announcer for all these years. I've played a lot of Chicago music on the radio for the last 32 years. And just a music fan. They say don't meet your heroes because some of them are jerks. Sometimes, some days, I'm often 
asked if I've met a lot of jerks through the years in radio, and I and I have, but I don't necessarily think they were jerks. Maybe they were a jerk that day. It's We all have tough days. To my Chicago friends, I'm going, you know, they have their time together, we have the music, and I'm overstating the obvious, but they're never gonna get back together. I don't think it's ever gonna happen. But as always, I wanna know what you think. Tell me what you think about this. You know, they've been bad to each other through the years. What do you think? Chicago's not getting back together. Give us your comments, share our videos, and subscribe to our channel. Also, uh, like us on Facebook and Twitter. We're there. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music.